Hello, it's Miss Jody. Um, today's lesson, as you could tell, wasn't posted until after church since um, children's worship started back up today. So that way, those of you who are coming to church, um, you heard it with either Miss Rhonda or with me. Um, now, you may not be able to tell this, but Blacktop is laying right here. I've been in my classroom a lot this week, so he's a little needy when I'm home. So we're going to try to teach a lesson with a cat right in front of me. Because, well, the poor guy. The poor guy. Okay. So sorry. If you remember, this unit is talking about the miracles of Jesus. And let's see. First, he, let's see, he healed the ten the 10 lepers. How many thanked him? One. Um, last week's lesson, he healed a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. It's a long time. In fact, she was considered unclean and people couldn't go around her. And he healed her just, she remember, she faithfully reached out and touched him knowing that if she could just touch him, she would be healed. And he said it was her faith that caused her to be healed. And then he was on the way to help the little girl that was sick, remember? And she actually died before he got there. But what did Jesus say? Do you remember? He said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. Which he was the son of God, right? All man, all God. So he can do that. This poor cat. Okay, so today's lesson, he's healing someone else. This time, he's going to heal a lame man. Do you know what the word lame means? Well, people have changed the word lame. Now, if someone says something's lame, it means it's awful or not very good. Um, but lame, back in the day, back in the Bible, meant that you couldn't walk. And so this is a man who can't walk that Jesus is going to heal today. And today's lesson is found in John 5. Oh my goodness, this cat. Alrighty, so our song for today is Just As I Am, which that might sound familiar because there is a hymn entitled Just I, As I Am, and the lyrics are a lot alike, but of course they took the hymn and made it more kid friendly. So it'll be a little different. So I did post the lyrics on Saturday and um, we sang it in children's worship today on Sunday. Um, and so we're still gonna sing it today in today's lesson. Okay, so what is the big question for unit 22? Do you remember? Why did God create people? Do you remember the answer? Tell me. God created people to worship him, to love him, and to show his glory. That's why we were created. Now, back in children's worship today, for the first through fifth graders, we reviewed the, the timeline. And if you think about it, um, Jesus had been traveling around healing and teaching pe people and doing miracles. And he wanted God's people to know that God um, was healing them through him. And that he wanted them to know God as creator and king. Now, we talked about the two previous lessons. So today we're going to learn about a man that was healed. He had been able to walk, unable to walk for nearly 40 years. Now that's not as old as Miss Jody, because I'm going to be 50. But 40 years is a long time not to be able to walk. So that is today's story. Now, let's read this together. Why did God create people? God created people to worship him, love him, and show his glory. 
you know what? I think I'm going to have to start taking the signs back and forth between church and my house so I can still record our lessons. And now let's go ahead and go over our Bible verse before we start our story. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. So today we have Jesus will heal a man that cannot walk. And somewhere I should have a picture. Well, I'm going to have to hit pause and figure out if Black Top knocked that picture down. Silly cat. I'm going to have to apologize to Blackie. It was still in the container. So this is someone's illustration of Jesus and the lame man, the man who couldn't walk. So if you would like to turn in your Bible to John 5, and I will too. Even though, remember, Miss Jody tells the story, but you can read the story with your family. John 5. And John 5, it tells us the story of Jesus healing the lame man. And it goes like this. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. And he stood by the pool of Bethsaida. Many people were at the pool who were blind, lame, paralyzed. Paralyzed means parts of their body can't move. Jesus noticed a man, and the man couldn't walk. He had been lying there for a very long time. Jesus asked him, Do you want to get well? The man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Someone else always gets in before me. You see, the man thought that if he could just get into the water, he could be healed. Now Jesus told him, get up, pick up your mat, walk. Now imagine he had been lame for 40 years. And here's Jesus saying, get up, take your mat, and start walking. Can you even imagine? Well, that's what happened. Right away, the man was miraculously healed. He picked up his mat, and he started walking. Now, this happened on the Sabbath, which was the day set aside for worship and rest. So the Jews told the man who was healed, it is against the law to pick up your mat on the Sabbath. Are you hearing this? They were so big on following rules that they wanted this lame man just to stay there even though he'd been healed. And the man said, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. Who was this man? The Jewish people said. But the man who was healed did not know who had healed him. By this time, Jesus had slipped away out into the crowd. Later, Jesus found the healed man at the temple, which was like the church. And Jesus said to him, See, you are healed. Do not sin anymore so that something worse doesn't happen to you. Then the man went to the Jews and told them that Jesus had healed him. So the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was healing people on the Sabbath. They thought it was more important to do nothing on the Sabbath than to heal someone. So Jesus told the Jewish people, my father is still working, and I am working too. Now, 
the Jews wanted even more to kill Jesus because he wasn't just breaking their rules about the Sabbath. He was saying that God was his father. That made him equal to God. Do you hear those notifications? Oh my goodness. I wonder who needs to get a hold of me. Jesus is God's son. He always did what God said was right, even if it went against what the Jewish leaders said was right. You see, the man at the pool was unable to help himself. Jesus healed him, and he obeyed Jesus' commands because Jesus has healed him. In a similar way, we are unable to free ourselves from our sin. Our sin makes us sick or harms us and keeps us from heaven. So Jesus calls us to trust him. And when we trust Jesus, he frees us from the sin, the power of sin and death over us so that we can spend forever with God. How is that for a story? The Jewish people were so fixed on those rules that they just didn't get it. So my question is, can you believe it? Yeah, the religious leaders were so caught up worrying about their laws that they didn't even stop and realize how amazing it was that Jesus healed the lame man. They didn't seem to care that this man who'd been laying around for 40 years because he couldn't walk, could walk now. They were upset that he picked up his mat. I think it's really cool to realize that the man Jesus healed obeyed him. When Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk, he didn't say, well, uh, I'd like to, but I uh, can't, Jesus. Nope. He didn't say, it's the Sabbath, I better not. And besides, I haven't walked in over 30 years. Nope, he didn't say that. Uh, he didn't say, eh, I'm just going to stay here until someone carries me into the pool. Nope, he didn't say that. Not at all. The man who was laying for 40 years, he was, he obeyed right away. He had faith in Jesus and his faith in Jesus healed him. That shows us something extremely interesting about Jesus. Jesus tells us what to do. He gives us the power to obey him. Without Jesus, we can't obey God. But if we have faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, God will forgive our sin and fill us with the Holy Spirit. And with his help, we can obey God. We can glorify God. We can worship God and love God. Did you catch those things? Remember why we're created? To love, worship, and bring glory to God. And with Jesus' help, we can do that. So this man at the pool, he was unable to help himself, but Jesus healed him. He obeyed Jesus, and in a similar way, we are unable to free ourselves from sin. But if we trust Jesus, he will free us from the power of sin himself. Isn't that amazing? Now, for those of you who came to ch church this morning, you, and we're in the first through fifth grade class, you listen to the questions for kids. Um, so we're gonna go ahead just a little bit to the mission story. Um, we've been learning about a woman. Do you remember her name? Amy Carmichael, right? And she had gone to different countries in the world to tell people about Jesus. In today's story, he healed a man who couldn't walk. Remember what they called Amy? They called her Amma, which meant mom. And she asked Jesus to heal her friend. She did. She had faith that Jesus would do it. It's important to remember that even if God doesn't heal someone, we can still trust him.
to use the situation for his glory and our good. Sometimes when we ask for healing, God knows better. We may think that's the best plan, but God's plans are higher and wiser than ours. So we're going to pray for um, those in mission work like Amy Carmichael was and for the missionaries from Calvary. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for Amy's faith and the example that she led for us when she was a missionary. Father, help us to have that same faith that we would um, trust you and ask you for big things and trust you with little things and know that whatever happens, that your plan is always best. Father, we pray for the Newells in their work with the Jesus film. We ask that you would be with Dar Darby and her work on campus ministries. We pray for the Westbrooks in California, that as California is opening back up, that you would give them wisdom and protection. And Father, we pray for the Efflers as they're serving in Africa. And we pray for the Kimmers as they, as they have left Calvary to um, begin the steps to go to Africa. And Father, I'm just going to pray specifically um, for a buyer for their house and for their kids' passports to show up. Father, I know that both of those situations um, are in your hands and you're not surprised by the problems that they're facing. So I just ask that you would take care of that need and that you would provide for them. Help us as a church to encourage them in their work that you have called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right now. So it is time for our song, which is, do you remember what I said it was? Just as I am. And then we'll do show what you know. So our lessons may be a little shorter now that children's worship's coming back up so that I'm not doing the same exact thing on the video that I do with the kids in the back. So let's sing just as I am. So if you don't have the lyrics, you might want to get them. I have my speaker up. Let's see if it, I don't know what the volume set on. So we'll see. Here we go. Just as I am, oh, just as I am, oh, just as I am, oh, just as I am, without one fee, without thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, oh, and of God I come. Just healing of the mind. Yes, all I need in thee to find. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I. Just as I am, oh, 
just as I am. Just as I am, oh, just as I am, oh, just as I am. That's a good hymn. And oh, tell me again how we signed up for this. <laughs> oops, I didn't hit stop quick enough. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's see if we can show what we know. Question one. Where was Jesus when he saw the man who could not walk? What city? Jerusalem. And where was he? At the pool of Bethesda. Why were the religious leaders upset at the man who had been healed? I know, right? They were upset because he was carrying a mat. So, who was Jesus' father? Trick question. Not the one on earth. The real one. God. So, how are we similar to the man who couldn't walk? We're trapped in our sin until we accept Jesus and have faith in him. And then he frees us from the power of sin and death. So how can we get salvation and be healed from our sin? By checking off something? No. By being good enough? No. The only way to have salvation and to be healed from our sin is to have faith in Jesus that he died for our sins and that he rose on the third day and then God gives us salvation through Christ why do you think Jesus told the man to stop sinning he said so something worse doesn't happen well that's talking about being separated from God. And we can try really hard not to sin, but sadly, we're still gonna sin. But Jesus' death is greater than sin and greater than death because he rose from the dead. And so he will forgive us from our sin when we confess, which when, when we ask him, to forgive us and then try not to do that sin anymore. So, in review, Jesus healed a, a lame man who had been lame for 40 years about. And the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders got mad because it was the Sabbath. And you're not supposed to do work on the Sabbath. So they completely missed the amazing miracle of the healing because they were so focused on the laws. Now, I'm not saying break the laws. I'm just saying don't miss what Jesus does because it's big stuff. I hope you have a great week. I hope I saw some of you in CBC Kids Room. And if not, you'll catch me next week. Have a great week.